Well, hello there and welcome to another episode on the channel. You know, I've just been whipping through my 2020 Nightscape Images calendar and I've come to the month of August and this beautiful old red brick church building. You can see it there. And it just so happens that this particular building is just down the road from where, where I'm located just at the moment. And I thought what I might do is continue my series on post-processing. So uh, this particular image took a fair bit of work in post to, to get into this state. So what I'm gonna do is take you down there and give you a look and we'll go from there. Look at that isn't that just an absolutely beautiful old brick church and the structure and you know I don't think it's used as a church anymore I'm pretty sure that it's been bought as a private uh, concern but I don't no one's living there it's you can see there's no maintenance done much here at all so it's been sitting out here for decades and you know I couldn't resist there one night coming here and shooting this so um, I set up the camera just inside here actually exactly on this angle Milky Way core up there in the sky behind, absolutely beautiful. It was, it was in September when I shot this, about 12 months ago, and it was uh, completely dark out here. There's no street lights, no nothing, quiet as anything. And so it required a fair bit of light painting, as you can see, because it's quite a large building. And so what I did, I took one shot for the background sky, and I remember shooting that uh, with my Nikon D750 and the 20 millimeter f 1.8, Shot that at f2.2 at ISO 5000 uh, at 15 second shutter speed. And then I took 18, that's right, 18 light painted foreground subjects. So I walked all around the front and the side of this building. Remember, never lighting from the same angle as the camera. So the camera was just down here, just over the other side of the fence. And I got over there, over here, and lit various parts of the church and the building and 18 of them in fact and a big part of this video is going to, I'm going to show you how I post produced that image and I think it's important for you to see so I shot those at f4 20 second shutter speed at ISO 500 so once again I've, I've made sure my, I've stopped there my aperture a bit made sure my focus was sharp on the building but it would have been anyway because that's probably 15 20 meters away from my camera so if you look at the depth of field chart you'll see um, that a 20 millimeter lens, even at f2.8, has a focus distance of about six meters, maybe seven, to get infinity. Uh, but even so, sometimes just to be sure, I like to add a margin for there and I make sure my foregrounds are sharp anyway, so I always do the adjustment. Um, and from there, I just walked around, did the light painting. Now, I'm going to show you now how I did the post production on this image. So, let's go and have a look at that. Okay, so here we are back in the studio and now I'm going to show you exactly how I edited this gorgeous image and how I got the final result. So let's get straight into it. Now as usual you can see we begin in Lightroom and what we have here is a single background image uh, shot out in the field. You can see this is shot with the 20mm f1.8 lens set to f2.2. 15 second shutter speed at ISO 5000. So that's shot with a Nikon D750. Now, I did shoot about four images. You can see them down the bottom here. And the problem I had was that there was a fair bit of cloud cover. The reason I didn't process all of these and perhaps stack them all together like I have been doing more recently is because of that fast moving cloud. It, it sort of plays havoc a fair bit with the stacking process in Sequoia. So I decided for this particular one just to a process a single image and you can see there's a lot of cloud in this shot but you know many times I think cloud actually adds to the overall dynamics of the background sky now what have I done to that image well as you can see I've increased the exposure a little bit contrast as well dropped the highlights added some whites and that is pretty much a standard processing for what I do for nearly all of my images 
just rolling down a little bit, you can see the only other thing I've done here is enable lens correction. So I've removed chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections. And the other thing I've done is enabled some noise reduction. So I've increased the luminance to 30 and also the contrast to 30. Everything else, every other setting at this stage, I haven't changed at all. Uh, the white balance, that's where I had it set, 3800. Uh, the tint minus two, that, that's just standard straight out of the camera. So you can see what I've done. Now, if I look at the before and after here, you can see largely all I have actually done is increased brightness and some of the saturation levels in, in the sky because ultimately the foreground is just a black silhouette anyway. So I haven't had to do pretty much anything at this point in time, but we're getting to that because now I'm going to show you that I took, well, let me see, let's open that one up. So this is the first of the foreground light painted images that I shot. Now you'll notice I've shot these at F4 up here, 20 second shutter speed at ISO 500. So effectively what I've done, I've closed down the aperture a bit, lowered the ISO a long way from where it was for the sky at 5000, that's down to 500 and lengthen the shutter speed a bit. So I've got a little bit more time to get around to shoot uh, the various angles. Now what I've done here, before I go on with this, I wanna show you, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. I've got 18 foreground shots. Now that's a lot. Now it's quite possible I'm not going to need all 18 of these images because when you're doing light painting in the field, one of the things that is uh, tricky and difficult about light painting a subject like this old church is the fact that sometimes you, you forget what you've actually lit and so you do it more than once. So it's quite possible with it, some of these 18 I've got a similar image and I won't need to use them all. But what I've found is it's best to, um, unless it's really obvious, it's best to process the ones you've got and then it's, a, it's pretty much a process of elimination after that. So once I get down further, probably when I get to Photoshop, that'll be the time when I work out, well, I don't need that and I don't need that, so I'll, I'll just move on. But at currently, I'm just gonna uh, work on all of them. Now, I've already done the, uh, to save time on this video, I've already, already done the adjustments, but I'm gonna show you what they were. Now, this first image, you can see I've increased the exposure a long way, plus two because it was, it was really underexposed. If you look at the original, you can hardly see that light, I just lifted the exposure up here. And because of my low ISO, I can do this and get away with it without adding noise. It's really, really handy. And that's one of the main reasons that I dropped the ISO down so much. Uh, and the fact that I've also closed down the aperture gives me a much sharper image. So when I zoom in on that, you can see that's really sharp. Now, even at those settings, you can see there's still stars being captured, which is fascinating, isn't it? Mind you, I don't want those stars. I'm gonna to have to get rid of those stars later on, but as it stands, that's just what the image looks like. So what I'm going to do, oh, before I, uh, I'll show you some other things I did before I move on. So I've dropped the highlights, increased the whites, and also increased the clarity. Now for a lot of these foreground images, especially stuff like this with bricks and, and stonework and, and rusty old uh, vehicles and things like that, farm machinery that I like to shoot, I always increase the clarity because it really punches the image just, just that little bit more. Now, if I go down further, uh, you can see there's no adjustments here at all until I get down to, once again, the lens profile corrections. So I've enabled profile corrections and removed chromatic aberration and noise reduction. Now, I've made the noise reduction here 19 for luminance and 19 for contrast. So it's roughly about 20, a little bit less than what I did for the sky. Why is that? Because there's less noise in the image. It's a lower ISO, uh, so there's therefore less noise. So I don't need as much noise reduction. I put a bit in there because you'll always get some noise reduction with these long exposures. So what I'm going to do now is highlight all of the images that I'm going to be processing. And you can see them here. I've got one background. This one here is a background layer. And all the rest of these ones are foreground layers. And I'm gonna open them in Photoshop. So what do I do? Right click on any one of those images Go up to here where it says edit in, down to the bottom, open as layers in Photoshop. Now you've seen me do this on a number of occasions and I think I mentioned to you the last time we did a video with post-processing, just how repetitive a lot of the steps are. And that is so true. And 
I guess that's part of the, the good thing because it helps us remember all of the various steps that we want to be going through. All right, well, we have all of those layers open now and it took quite a while. Now, depending on the machine you're working on, particularly if you're working on a laptop, this could take a long time. So I'd suggest going to pour yourself a cup of tea, having a rest and coming back a bit later. But anyway, you will notice they've come in in the order that they were shot. In other words, the background image here is on top of the stack. So I need that to be on the bottom. So I'm gonna grab it and drag it all the way down to the bottom. And there we go. Drag it all the way down to the bottom. So now with uh, Photoshop, as you can see, you're only seeing the top layer. And if I turn each of those layers off, you can see you start to be able to see the layer that's underneath. And you can see all the various light painting uh, shots that I took for this particular image. What I wanna do is turn all of those back on. Now to get, this is something I usually do, to, to get a, a, an idea, I, I guess a quick preview of what this is going to look like. What I'm going to do is click on the top layer and then the second last layer, hold down shift on my keyboard and that selects all of those layers. Now, I'm going to go up to here to the blend mode which currently says normal and I'm simply gonna change that to lighten. And now, what you will notice is all of the layers with transparency so I can see through the dark areas. In other words, I can see the sky of all of the layers, particularly the sky of the background layer which is the one that I really want to use. Now, this looks pretty good, except there's way too much stuff in there I will need to get rid of. For example, here these squiggles here, that's me with my torch light painting. You can see them again here, over here, here and here. So um, often when you're light painting a subject like this, especially these bigger ones, you will get in the shot. No worries about that at all. So that isn't an issue at all. But at this stage in the processing, we've got to get rid of that. The other thing I need to get rid of is all of these stars. You can see it's taken quite a while to actually do the light painting. And, and in doing so, we've created almost like star trails of these dots. Each dot is a different exposure. And because I've got so many of them, there's a lot. Look at that. Because there's so many stars there, I need to get rid of because I'm going to only use this one. But the problem is, as, I, as you can see, when I turn some of these layers on, you see all these other stars. I don't want them there. So normally what I would do is add a layer mask to this top layer and then just select the paintbrush tool there using that layer mask and rub it out. But because of the very straight angles here on this building, I have found it to be a problematic sometimes. And especially in this image where uh, when I exposed all of these images, the clouds were coming and going. And what that means is sometimes you can see the stars along the edges and sometimes you can't. So if I do a layer mask on one of these images and then find that I can't see the stars, what that effectively means is if I'm copying and pasting the, the layer mask, which I have done plenty of times and I usually do, sometimes the stars will show through. So in this particular example, what I'm going to do is create uh, a layer mask here on this bottom layer, just bear with me and I'll show you what I'm doing, which is this background sky. The, the, this church is just a shadow. And I'm actually going to grab a selection tool up here, quick selection tool. And I'm just gonna go like this. This is very common. People do use these quick selection tools all the time. And you can see what it's done. Now, that's pretty good, except I'm missing these two crosses here. It's missed a little bit of the uh, tree over here. So I'll fix that up. We're just gonna zoom in a little bit closer so we can see what's going on and a bit closer again. Now this cross, we're gonna fix that up. So what I'm going to do is simply click around the cross and that's done a pretty good job of selecting that little bit there I'm gonna try and get rid of. So I'll just click up here and that hopefully will take it away. It's not a great disaster to be honest, even if it didn't do that. Uh, because I'll fix it up later. But that, that looks good. Let's go, oops, let's go to the next cross up and see if that one's been selected. No, we've missed that one as well. So once again, I've got my tool here, which is adding to this selection. I'm just going to click on it like that. And Photoshop's going to determine, well, gee, it did a good job there, didn't it? Determine what I need. Let's go to the next cross. And it's already got that one selected. Fantastic. Let's go down the side. Yeah, that looks really good. It's got most of that tree. Um, I'll just add a little bit here. It doesn't matter, this, this tree is nowhere near a problem. Um, so I'm not too concerned about the tree because the tree's not really even um, relevant. 
I think this tree is just a dark silhouette anyway, but I'm, I'll just do it to show you what I'm talking about. So here I'm just going to add in this tree. And the software is uh, a bit confused in this area here, which is un understandable because it's just a pretty shadowy figure, but that looks pretty good. Um, you will be aware that I often don't do this in my uh, nightscapes. So um, this is the first time I've actually used that quick selection tool in ages because I usually don't need to, I just rub it out manually. Now, what I have to do is actually copy this layer mask down here to all of these other layers. So what I'm gonna do is just hold down Alt on my keyboard and drag it all the way to the top layer. And you can see now that has been applied to the top layer. I'm gonna turn off the bottom layer for the time being. And now you can see that layer mask is on this top layer. So all I need to do now is make sure I click on the layer mask, go over here to my paintbrush tool, make sure I'm on black on the bottom there and 100% opacity. And all I'm going to do is rub out the sky. Now this is really cool because you can see I can't rub out underneath the sky. In other words, I'm just going over it like so. You can see I'm going over the edges, but it's not actually rubbing out anything because of my selection. You can see the selection is still, well, selected. And therefore, this is making it a lot easier to select the building. So I'm just gonna do this, go over all those edges, make sure I've got that, rub out the rest of the sky. Remember, I'm using layer mask over here, and I'm using the paintbrush tool to do so. It doesn't matter if I've got a hard or a soft brush because I'm just painting over the whole thing. All right, how's that? Fantastic. Now, if I turn on the bottom layer, there's my sky shining through. And if I press, uh, go up to select and press deselect, suddenly I've got a beautiful clean mask around my church building. And that was pretty quick. So especially with these nice hard straight edges like buildings like this, it's really easy to do this. So what I'm going to do now is on this bottom layer, I don't need that layer mask anymore. So I'm gonna click on the layer mask and delete it. And actually, um, I'll leave that on. Now, as I go down here and turn these on, all I need to do now, let me just turn them all on so you can see what I'm talking about. See, I've still got all of these stars in here, but as I go down and copy this layer mask by holding down Alt on the keyboard onto each layer, you will see that gradually all of those uh, star trail extra star, uh, stars there that I don't want in my image will disappear doesn't take long to do this, and I could possibly do this as a, as a group, but I'm not going to do that. I want to just show you individually what this does, because it's really cool. I'm just copying, I'm holding down Alt on the keyboard and dragging the layer mask down from one layer to the next, and you can see what's going on here. So we get to the bottom, and suddenly all of those random stars are gone. Now, isn't that a really quick way of doing it? Now, of course, you can see that we still have all of these uh, light trails here to get rid of. So that's my next job. What I have to do is work out which layers they're on. So to do that, all I have to do is turn off the individual layers until I see something, uh, one of those uh, light trails disappear. And when I do, uh, we're still going. Okay, there's one over here. See this one here? that disappeared when I turned that layer off. That indicates that that particular light painting is on that layer. So I just go over here and rub it out. Easy as that, simple as anything. Okay, there's another one. So that one, I'll click on the layer mask and go over here, rub it out. Let's go down and see what else we can find. Uh, not that one. Oh yeah, there's a little bit. You gotta have good eyes for this, just there. Just rub that torch out. Let's go down a bit further. I don't think so. Don't think so. No. Oh, there we go. There's one. That's a big one. So just here. That's an easy rabbit. Now remember, I've still got a brush tool and it's, it's a hard brush. I'll probably use a soft brush from here on because it's just a little bit less obvious when you touch an edge. There's a big one. So we're gonna turn that one Click on the layer mask. It's important to be on the layer mask and not the layer. And just rub it out. So that has to be on 100% opacity up here. 
All right, there we go. And we've got this one in here to get rid of. Can you see that one? So it's, hopefully it's on this last layer and there it is. Click on it, click on the layer mask and gently rub it out. And from here, we can continue with our edits to the image. Like I said to you at the very beginning, there's some of these layers that are very possibly not even required. And I'm just gonna turn some of them off. As you can see, that one. Um, I'm gonna um, feather some of that. So I'm gonna change my brush to about 70%, make that a larger brush and feather it. See how I'm actually painting above where the light is, just to sort of soften that a little bit. So rather than just turn the layer off completely, which would look like that, I've just softened the effects of that a little bit. Now you will have different opinion on what you like and what you don't like, that's fine. We all have our opinions and we will all have our preferences for what we wanna do. So I'm going through turning layers on and off just to see what the difference is. Now this layer here's a good example. I like a bit of that light, but I don't like the bit on the end. So I'm just gonna rub the end bit out, but I'm leaving the bit that comes in a bit further, a bit more solid. Okay, so I'm going through turning layers off. You can see that's a quite a hefty change. I think I'll just, I'll just leave it for the moment, but I might come back to that one. That one's very important, so I'm not gonna move that one. So this is the front grass. Now they're, they're definitely that needs softening out. So what I'm going to do is just make the, the image a lot smaller. That gives me room to make my brush bigger and feather it across the edge. So you can see what I'm doing here, creating a feather on my brush. And I'm not rubbing the whole layer out. I'm just rubbing out bits and making that still come in towards the edge of it, which is just what I want. I want the grass to be in the shot. That's why I lit it. Okay, let's just move back to the next one. That's quite a heavy, again, I'm gonna do the same thing. Just go to the edge and feather right on the edge here. So it looks like the light is spilling a little bit more into the image. You know, I can be very pedantic with this. Not really the point of this exercise is to be pedantic. I just wanna show you the methods and the techniques. That's my main aim here. That looks pretty good. I, I like the way that the, the actual light has got dark areas and light areas. So th that's the main reason for doing this light painting in the method. Now, I've disabled two of the layers at this point in time because I don't think there's any more that I don't actually like. So what I'm doing now is just going back through them, turning them on and off gradually, just to work out if there's anything that I can modify whilst I'm going here. Oh, now that one's quite aggressive, but I like, I really do like some of those hard edges so you can see the areas that have been deliberately lit to create a bit of highlight. Remember, if I change this to white, I can paint things back in. So this is a very much a non-destructive workflow, which, which is part of the attraction. I love that. All right, I like it. That's really bold. So you can see here, out of all these layers, there's only two that I've disabled totally. The rest, I've done a little bit of modification on some of them. Now, just to move on, I'm looking at the, the background sky layer here. What I'm going to do is, is add what's known as an adjustment layer. Little circle at the bottom, click on that and go up to the curves adjustment layer. This gives you a little graphical um, display of the uh, histogram. I'm gonna just lift the highlights a bit here. I'm, I'm actually just putting a standard S curve. I'm gonna drop the lower tones, not that much, just about there. And you can see what that has actually done as it's just given a bit more punch to the Milky Way. Uh, now, if because that actually adds a layer mask, if I don't like some of that selection, what I can do, and I will just to show you, if I think, for example, that white is too bright, all I need to do here is just paint it back out again. Remember, I'm at, I'm at a 70% opacity. I'm on the, working on this layer mask on the curves layer here. So I can just drop that down if, it, if I think that's not quite right, but I don't mind it, but I'll just do a little bit. That's not particularly dodging and burning in the true sense of the word. I'm just um, taking out a little bit of the intensity of that um, curve, as you can see. Up here, when I lifted that up, it makes the white areas of the image increase in, in brightness. Only the background, not the church itself, because it's I'm only working on this bottom layer down here. Okay, oh, I think that looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do now is flatten this image. That's a massive file size, it's three gigabytes. Down here, you can see three gigabyte file, way too big for me to keep that as a layered 
TIFF file. So what I'm going to do is go up to here where it says uh, layer, go down the bottom, flatten image, discard hidden layers. They're the ones that I haven't enabled here and I'll say yes to that. Now you can see it's back to 139 megabytes, much more manageable file. I like the look of that. See, it's got the darkish edges, it's got some highlights around the building. Okay, so I'm gonna cross out of Photoshop. I've finished there, say yes to that. What that will do now is take the file back as a flattened TIFF file back into Lightroom. Lightroom opens up and there we have it. There's our file. Now, one of the things I'm going to do here before, you can see because of the wide angle lens, it wasn't an ultra wide, but I was using a 20 millimeter focal length. There's a lot of angular distortion here. So I'm going to go down. Yes, I'm going to go down to the transform heading here and do a vertical, trying to straighten up a little bit those edges. You can only go a certain amount before you lose, you start to lose all the edging here. As you can see, I've lost a fair bit there because what's happened here is I've lost real estate. And you can see here by, when I go into the crop tool, I can move my image around a little bit within that crop. And I don't mind losing a bit of that top there, so I'm just gonna do that. I like that, that looks pretty good. Now what I'm going to do now, one more thing. I'm gonna go up here into the graduated filter and I want to sort of feather the grass down the bottom here. So what I'm going to do there is go into exposure and drop it down a fair way so that I'm lightening, uh, sorry, darkening off these corners. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side Yep, I like the look of that. So what I've actually done is made it so that it looks much more like there's a spotlight on the actual building. I like that. I think that looks absolutely fantastic. So let's press F on the keyboard for full screen. And there we have it. There's our light painted final product, Milky Way, beautiful Milky Way over the top of our church with our 13 layers, which I got rid of two. So there's about 11 layers of light painting there. But overall, that's a beautiful looking image. Love it. So there you go, I reckon that's a beauty. Now I love these old buildings like this. And as you can see from this video, I put quite a bit of time and effort out in the field because I captured so many images to create the final uh, blended image here. But in the end, you know, it's worth it. If I didn't capture all of those frames out there, I wouldn't have them to work with when I get back home. Now, yeah, you could say it's overkill with so many, but. I think, you know, you're there already, so it doesn't take that much more effort to capture a few more, even if you don't use them all when you get back. So anyway, that's my instalment of this episode comes to a close. Another in my tutorial on uh, post-processing, and I've got quite a few more coming. I'm working, I think the next one might be Star Trials. Don't hold me to that. I've got one of those in the pipeline, and I'm really looking forward to that because I love Star Trials. And you know, the thing about Star Trials, you can shoot them any time of the year. You're not dependent on the Milky Way core making an appearance. So if you've liked this video, I'd love you to uh, put a thumbs up or uh, comment down below. Love chatting to you guys on the comments. And the other thing is, if you'd like to subscribe to my channel and uh, click the little bell icon down there, you'll get notifications every time a new video comes up and I'm trying to keep them coming pretty hard and fast. So uh, I'll look forward to seeing you guys on the next one. And until then, hope you have a great time out under the stars, wherever you may be. I'll see you later.